So the Dallas Mavericks got eliminated. And so we're going to ask the question, is this on Luka Doncic? All that coming up in about 20 seconds. With that, I'm going to ask you this. Is it fair or unfair to say this, Jimmy? Luka Doncic choked in that game. Is that fair or unfair to say? It would be completely unfair because you don't choke when you've been carrying your team the entire series and in a closeout game, either way, you have 46 points and 14 assists. If anybody, and I hate to say choked, but if anybody didn't perform up to the level at which they needed to in order to not get beaten by 15 points in the game seven, it was his number two and his number three. His number two, Tim Hardaway, had 11 points. I believe the majority of those came in the first half. And Kristaps Porzingis, who's being paid like he's supposed to be, his number two, had... What do you have, 16 points, but it was 0 of 5 from 3. And a lot of those were open three-pointers because in the second half, right on cue, Luka was getting double and triple teamed at times or trapped. The entire defensive scheme was around him. So they didn't step for, up for him. Neither did the bench. They had six points from the entire bench of the Dallas Mavericks as opposed to 27 points from the Clippers. So if you're looking to find out who choked this game seven away – then you have to look elsewhere from Luka Doncic because it definitely was not him. I'm 100% on that same bandwagon as you. There's nothing about Luka that says choked as some people. Nobody, nobody's really saying it. It's kind of more of a question I want to pose because I really want to point out how unfair it is that certain players that perform like Luka did, they expect all the weight on your shoulders and they expect you to do even more with it on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Like the expectations behind Luca, I mean, Luca put up 46 and 14. That means that 14, there's 14 scores that, that Mm -hmm. happened with him and his assists, Mm -hmm. which could equate to a minimum of 28 points, if not more. Right. So he was everywhere doing everything you could expect from a player of his caliber. But let's add to that though. He has ascended himself to, I put it like this, he has basically signed up for the legendary plan. And let me explain what that means by the legendary plan. All right. Luca did something that really only the greats do. They put up these type of numbers while being doubled and triple teamed to carry their team as far as possible. Every game that they played technically on the road, but... It didn't feel like it was really a road game because the Clippers didn't have as many fans in their games as other teams did. They mm-hmm. felt like they were a little bit more conservative right. as far as allowing fans in there. And when they did that, when the Mavericks were in L.A., Tim Hardaway Jr. dropped, what, 21 in the first game and 28 the second game. Mm-hmm. Everybody was contributing. Everybody on that team. But then when they got to Dallas, what happened? They've got to play basketball. Right. They couldn't contribute. They weren't making shots. So I say that Luca took the legendary plan because Luca was producing every single game besides one. That was the game four. 31 in game one. 44 in game three. 42 in game five. 46 in game seven. Luca was finding ways to produce everything, but at the same time, he was running out of gas. This is a la LeBron James. Michael Jordan, Estique, Kobe Bryant situations where they put up all these points, but nobody else on the team is ready to produce. And so every year you keep getting eliminated early. That's what Luca has signed up for. He signed up for the, okay, I'm going to put you on my back and I'm going to do what I can to try to move us forward. But he's guaranteed to run out of gas every single playoff mm-hmm. series. So the Mavericks need to add to that legendary plan Add the perks to it. It's time to add the benefits that you would get from the legendary plan, which Mm -hmm. is find him a comparable number two or even develop one in-house. Get someone that is consistent with making shots to put just a little pressure off Luka because Luka handles the ball, he distributes the ball, he shoots the ball. Mm -hmm. He needs something out of that taken away. And if they can find a way to do that, that legendary plan will see out and he will end up being in the finals. Okay, well, let's say we took out choking and we said, who is the most to blame for this? Yes. Now, you mentioned that Luca has purchased the legendary plan. Yes. And that you just mentioned him amongst the greats in terms of what he's facing as far as what LeBron, Kobe, and MJ had to face in the playoffs where they were great, but their 
their teammates and especially having a lack of a number two at that time yes. is a part of what kept them from the kind of success that in a sense they deserve because of how they played in that series. But being amongst those legends and being a part of that legendary plan, isn't there this little clause at the end of it that says, even despite playing great and having great numbers in a playoff series, if your team loses, the majority of the blame comes to you. Yes, it does. Same yeah. thing with, um, well, this is what's funny is that Damian Lillard didn't even sign up for the legendary plan. We'll talk about him a little bit more, a little bit later. Right. But he didn't sign up for the legendary plan. He kind of signed up for the uh, all-star plan. <laughs> And somehow is getting legendary benefits mm-hmm. without that clause at the end. That without you take the, the blame. clause at the end, exactly. Right. So Luca's getting blamed for all of this, and rightfully so, he should because he is the head and shoulders of this team. Mm-hmm. But I guess the context that we have to always add into this is the Mavericks bench scored six points in that game, mm-hmm. and everybody else had double digit figures in the first on the starting five. But they had 18, 11, 14, and 16. That's not something that's going to be conducive to winning in the NBA playoffs, mm-hmm. especially playing against a team that includes Paul George and um, Kawhi Leonard. And you mentioned him needing a number two, and there's somebody else who needs the exact same thing that we'll get to later. But it seems like getting a number two, like an all-star level number two upon which who you can depend on has become one of the more difficult things or has become almost as equally as difficult as finding a star one. Yes. Even nowadays, if you get that star one, as hard as that is, whether it's through free agency or through the draft, then you got to work another however many years it takes to get an adequate number two. See, Scottie Pippen ruined basketball for a lot of people because everybody saw I guess you could say he's the perfect example of what a number two is supposed to be. Yes. So everyone says, okay, how hard could it be? We don't want you to be a one. We just want you to be an adequate two. But what they forget is that Scottie Pippen is an all-time great player. So to draft an all-time great player to go with one of the greatest of all time, maybe the greatest of all time, definitely the greatest in his era, is extremely hard to do. So there are a lot of teams who say if we just had that number two, if we just had that Pippen to our Jordan or that Robin to our Batman, we would be able to go further in the playoffs. But yet, hardly nobody has that level of a number two. Only a few teams do. Exactly. And and to be honest, I don't honestly know if that truly exists. I think you have to have a 1A and a 1B. You really can't have a two. Mm Because we haven't seen anybody in the league produce an actual number two, but I mean a, a true number two besides I think the last time we probably seen it was what um, was, was the Lakers with Kobe and Gasol. I mean a true like number two outside of like the big three era, because that's so, like, I don't, I don't side. think LeBron, so, I don't think LeBron Kobe was a one and two. Well, okay, I well, think it was a one, a one B situation. Even though Wade was falling apart, I do feel like it was one. Well, I mean, one like in the big threes that we've had, how many of them have actually been quality number twos that you could not only depend on, but depend on for years to come? Because you look at all right, LeBron in Cleveland when he had Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving left when he was in Miami. He had D Wade and Chris Bosh. Chris D Wade got old fast. Um, I mean, what are the other big threes? Okay, you had. I mean, uh, you got uh, yeah, uh, Golden, Celtics, Golden State, right? Golden State's. Well, Golden State's probably the only one. I'm, I'm, I'm my bad. I, now you, so you we'll mentioned it. State, Clay then, is the perfect number two. Mm-hmm. But that's not even counting the Kevin Durant years, right? No, no, we can't we, count. So we, somehow we don't include. There in this is discussion. no because I see that because technically that's one A one B with a right. pseudo that's right. number two. Clay uh-huh. is that number two. Yeah, I guess you technically would say. Yeah, because he doesn't require much, but he produces like freaking crazy, mm-hmm. and he knows that he's going to get his bread. He doesn't mind all other stuff. So yeah, that, that, mm-hmm. that's the that's another that's a conversation for another day. Let, let, let's yeah. table that and make that a a de- in depth conversation. I need to do some research on that because I'm really curious about what those ones and twos do look like. That's a good uh-huh. one. Good. Uh, but let me ask you this then: Is it fair or unfair to say, as we move more into this segment uh, in, into these teams, that the Clippers have a chance to upset the Utah Jazz? Oh, it's completely fair. I think on paper, this looks like an incredibly difficult series for the Clippers in the sense that you come from a hard-fought seven-game series to now face the one seed on the road, uh, one seed that's been resting, that's been studying you, that's great on defense, very efficient on offense, well coached, and that they're the number one seed for a reason. But when you look at the fact that most people would say the Clippers have the two best players in that series, then 
I guess it increases the level of chance that they actually have, especially if Kawhi Leonard can not only stay healthy for this entire series as he did against the Mavs, but to produce the types of games, especially the last two games of the Maverick series where he did carry that team on his back like a superstar is supposed to, then even with how good Utah has been this year, I think that when you take in the history of the playoffs, when you take a really good team up against a player who's just playing even as great as they are, almost greater than they've ever played before, that player always finds a way generally to beat that team. You're right. So that's what they're looking at. Um, there's a lot to be confident in with the Jazz, but I think that Kawhi has hit a second gear that he hasn't hit, I mean, what, since Toronto, which is only a few years ago, but still you saw what that led to. Exactly. Well, mm-hmm. I'd say he did that last year as well in this series. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hit that second gear to get Dallas out of the playoffs. And then he had a little bit of that going into that three, one lead against Denver. And then the wheels fell off Mm. at a certain point, which that's where I think that it's not, it's unfair to even say that that it didn't make it. We, I, we shouldn't, we should not give the Clippers the benefit of the doubt being the fact that they're now in the second round and the team has never won a second round series ever. That is true. So I'm going to say Utah wins this series. I'm calling Utah to win this series right now. Okay. I'm going to say Utah wins it in six. The only reason why I'm calling it six is going to be a battle. I don't see the Clippers staying together mm. physically before the series ends. Well, I mean, it could be that. I think that as I look at teams and, I've, and as I've looked at teams throughout this playoffs, it's it's almost like we were just talking about ones and twos. I look at the threes. Because teams are supposed to be about evenly matched when you get to this level of the playoffs. Right. So let's say the top two players, well, they'd have to be the top two players. Actually, no. I was going to say the top two are Gobert and Mitchell, but they did have a third all-star somehow in Mike Conley. But I don't think he's the third best player, honestly, on this team. I think it's uh, Bogdanovich. So let's say... I think the third one is Jordan Clarkson. Maybe Jordan Clarkson. Okay, but I get get you with with, with, with Bogdanovich. So let's say Gobert does what he does and does it well. Let's say Donovan Mitchell does as well. Let's say we get Kawhi and Paul George performing the way that they know how. That could easily be a bit of a wash, and it should. They should go back and forth between this team's two best players and the other team's two best players. Then it comes down to, okay, who is each team's third best player, and what does that matchup look, look like in terms of their productivity? So then it'd be Jordan Clarkson versus... If you take the last two games of the Clippers Mavs series, their, their third best player was Reggie Jackson somehow. Who he they put, put in? The, he put up fifteen last game. Yeah. So then you look at who's going to win the matchup out of those two. Two, just like I talked about the Nets Bucks series, when it comes down to okay, who's the third option? Kyrie Irving versus we'll say Chris Middleton. Yeah. Who's going to outperform the other? That's what this series is going to come down to. Just like that one. I'm with you on that. I can see that. Mm-hmm. So, so you pick. You, I'm going to say you say Utah in six. I'm going to again. Stick with you have to on stick a hope and a prayer. A what I've done all season long, which is the Clippers getting to the finals and winning, so I have to pick them to win this series. I say this is going to be another seven game series for them. All right, yeah. I'm, I'm there for it. Well, I'm there for it. Yeah.